Good morning, Santa Rosa Adventist Church, Pastor Don, uh, coming to you once again on a Sabbath morning for our church service virtually, which uh, begs the question, why are we gathering virtually based on the most recent uh, statements from the state of California and our Governor Newsom in the reopening of houses of worship, of places of worship? I, first of all, can we get away from this reopening of church language because um, words are so important to me and um, I wanted to, to reopen means that we were closed and the church has never been closed. The church, the church is you and you have always been open to the leading and work of the Holy Spirit in your life and then manifesting that work out in testimony of the love of Christ to those around you. And so look, the church has never been closed, but so the question is, when and, and how will we, will we be able to regather as the community of faith? And at this time, we have posted on our Facebook page and our website um, guidelines for what that looks like and when we will be able to gather in regards to certain circumstances and meeting some criteria that will, will move us towards uh, a time when we will be able to regather in partnership with our local governance. And so that's all there on our, on our Facebook page and our website information um, around what it looks like and how and, and um, without specific timelines, but saying this is the thing, these are the things that need to happen before we can regather and how we will regather. So until then, uh, we uh, continue to be the church in that through our Vine Center for Community Health and Wholeness, um, we are beginning a partnership with Carmichael uh, Food Bank, Carmichael Seventh-day Adventist Church, and Pastor Keith Jacobson, my good friend and mentor. We are beginning a distribution of, of food for families in need in light of this pandemic and the economic uh, stress it's put on many families in our community. And so, so Monday, we're going to be getting a delivery and we want to distribute on Monday evening from seven to eight o'clock. We're going to be delivered 100 boxes of individually packed, ready to just hand out a box of vegetables and fruit, grocery quality vegetable fruits that are packaged, boxed and ready to go, 100 of them that will be um, need to be distributed to families in need. And so if you know of someone, if you'd like to distribute one of those boxes or if you are in need of one of those boxes, we want you to uh, come and get that seven o'clock, seven to eight o'clock on Monday evening. Uh, we'll be distributing that food and getting it out to the community in need. With that uh, in mind, we want to move into the word this morning. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, um, we open the letter of 2 Peter and we pray for your Holy Spirit upon us that we might come to greater knowledge of the depth of your love for us, Father. And so we pray that. And um, God, um, we begin... Oh, to lean in and share in your divine nature. What an incredible invitation. Make it true in your name, amen. That is the invitation of 2 Peter. Um, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, we find um, that Peter, when we get down into, into verse 3, Peter is, is going to articulate out what God wants for us, for those who have said yes to him, for those who have received this faith in Jesus Christ and the knowledge of God in, in Jesus Christ, right? For those who have received this faith, God wants something for us. And what he not and I love that language. Peter's saying, this isn't about what God wants from us. It's what he wants for us. And what does he want for us? Well, look there in, ver in chapter 1, verse 4. He says, Through these he has given us his very great and precious promise, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. Having escaped, look, to, to participate in the divine nature is what God wants for us. 
That's an incredible invitation. It's actually what we were created for, right? I mean, it's what we were created for. In, in verse 3, he says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him, right? So, for a godly life, what is a godly life? Well, it is the life that we were created for. We were originally created with godly life, with God at the center of our lives. In the Garden of Eden, you have Adam and Eve, and God is there in their presence, and they are partaking in the divine nature. And, and the great lie, the adversary, comes, and the great deceptive lie is that you can live autonomously from God. You can live apart from God. You can live a life apart from God. It is the great lie that the adversary has sold to humanity. And, and what the invitation here is, 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 is Peter saying, come back into a godly life. God has given you every resource you need to, to once again put him back at the center of your life and, and through this knowledge, through this knowing, and last week we talked about what that knowledge is. A lot of times in our Western mindsets, we think knowledge, oh yeah, that knowledge that we would know all the scriptures, that we would know the, the theology, that we would have this great capacity. But the knowledge that he's inviting us into, the knowing of God is to know his love, the depth of his love. I, I look at the, we, we read in 1 John chapter 4, right? Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. The knowledge of God is to come into greater and greater understanding of his great love. I think about uh, our verse that we had back in Ephesians chapter 3. Look at this. Paul in Ephesians chapter 3, what is he saying? He says in chapter 3, verse 14, For this reason I kneel before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. His, its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in, in love, may have power together with all Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love is, to, is that surpasses knowledge. That is the knowledge that Peter's inviting us into, that we would know and begin to experience the depth and, and the great abundant love of God for you and for everyone. Ah, oh, it's an incredible invitation. And when we, get, when we dive into this love, and what does this love do? It invites us to participate in his divine nature. Um, what keeps us from participating in his divine nature? Well, it, it, he says, look, the rest of verse 4. Um, participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. So the corruption of the world, Peter's going to do something very interesting here. He's going to, he's going to uh, in the letter, in, in, the, in the verses between 3 and 11, he, he's going to, there's, there's the world, the corrupted world, and then if you go down to verse 11, he says, And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's the world and there's the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. There is the corrupted world and then there is the kingdom of heaven of which the king and, and Savior Jesus Christ is the king. Um, and he says, look, the, the corrupted world caused, the world is corrupted because it is corrupted by evil desires, right? Now, we went back to that creation story, Adam and Eve in the garden. Oh, Adam and Eve in the garden, they're sold a lie. They buy into the lie that God is not for them and that they can live autonomously, right? And they can live within their own knowledge and understanding, right? And so, 
apart from God. And so their desires, it's not that desire is in itself evil, it's that my desires can be, um, well, corrupted, short-sighted, right? And he says, look, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. Verse 10, therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. Ah, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. We were not created for the corrupted world. All right? We were not created to live a life apart from God. Because when we do, when we, when we strive to live apart from the love of God, from the life source of God, um, our desires become, well, contaminated and corrupted. We think that we can do this on our own. We think the things that we need um, will fulfill us and bring us fulfillment. And Peter is saying, no, come back and live in this truth that you've accepted in the faith of Jesus Christ. He says, live out and confirm your calling and election. Confirm your calling and election. You have said yes to God. He has he has, you've accepted his calling on your life, right? And God is calling everyone, right? He's electing everyone. You know, you're calling what you were called and created and designed to be in an image bearer of God. I think of the story of, of the farmer who, who uh, found uh, a, an eagle's egg that had fallen to the ground uncracked and undamaged and he and he went to his chicken coop and he put this eagle egg in that chicken coop maybe you've heard this story but you know so here this eagle uh is born into a family of chickens and in the environment that it's that the ch that the eagle is is raised in he be he sees himself as a chicken and and he walks around and and as a chicken and he does the whole chicken thing and he and and he watches the chicken whether they get their nourishment from and you know from eating worms and bugs off the ground so he's just like you know slamming his big eagle face into the ground and pecking at, at bugs and pulling at worms and 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 that is not what that eagle was created for he is corrupted by short-sightedness um by uh his limited understanding of what's going on around him he's not living out what he was created to be right and and that's what that that's what peter's inviting us into right live what you were created to be your calling um and he says let's go back to verse five he says and how you begin to come into this reality he says, for this, verse, verse 5, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. He's going to start to say, look, not that you're going to add more grace from God. You don't add to that. What you're doing is you're going to begin to live out your faith and believe even and experience your faith at a whole new level. You're not going to add to, God, to, to God's love. God's love is abundant. It's more abundant than we can imagine. And it's infinite. And God's love is for you and always upon you and always available to you. What he's saying is, is add to your faith. Begin to live out your faith by living out goodness. And to goodness, you're going to add to goodness knowledge. Grow in your knowledge and understanding of the love of the capacity of great capacity of God's heart for you and for everyone else. The knowledge of God. And to knowledge, you're going to add self-control. Begin, you know, add self-control so that you begin to experience and line yourself with the divine nature of God. And, and he says this, perseverance, you're going to add to self-control, perseverance. Don't give up in your faith. Don't give up in, in adversity, but persevere on. 
you begin to experience, as you begin to put into practice your faith, you begin to align yourself with the very divine nature of God and it lives through you and empowers you. So persevere. And, and he says, and, and to perseverance, godliness. Put God always at the center of your life. Live out the character and life of God in your life. And to godliness, mutual affection. And to mutual affection, ah, oh, love. Ah. Oh. He says, these things, these are all aspects of living out our faith. Oh, living out the divine nature. We begin, and when you live these things out, you begin to experience the truth of love and goodness and mutual affection. You break the, the patterns of a corrupt world of deceit, of lying, of manipulation, of hypocrisy, of, of, of seeing people as just objects, of obje uh, uh, objectifying people. You... You begin to, to move and, and live in the will of God when you begin to put these things into practice in your life. Oh, it's so good. And, and, they, and, and for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. Oh, and he says, in your knowledge, unproductive, in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you know love, and if you know love, you will live love. Remember John? Okay, come on. First John chapter 4. Those who know God and know love, live love. And if you do not live love and live out that mutual affection, you don't know. You don't have the knowledge, the true knowledge of God. Oh, and he says, knowledge in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted, is blinded forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. He's saying, look, God's abundant grace is upon you. You are liberated. You are free, right? Be who you were called to be. He says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. Be who you were created to be. Oh, look, look what's happened in the person of Jesus Christ. The divine has shown up. He has liberated us from the lies of sin. You are now able and, and you, you, you can live what you were created to be. That You were not created to be an eagle among chickens. You know, just slamming your face into the ground and pecking at bugs. One day, oh, the story goes like this. One day that, that eagle looked up and saw, saw another eagle flying. And he looked around and he said, you know, he, he asked one of his fellow, uh, one of his chicken mates, right? He says, hey, what's that? And he said, well, that's the eagle. I said, what's, what's the eagle doing? That's flying. Wow. And uh, that eagle stepped into who he was created to be, the story goes. Um and began to fly and realized what he was created for, what his calling was, what he was elected for, liberation, freedom. Ah, that's Peter's invitation this morning. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? That we have the invitation from God himself to participate in his divine nature. And the way that we do that is in tangible actions and ways and put things into practice in our life. Not that he would accept us in some greater capacity because his capacity of acceptance is already full, um, right? But that we might come into greater knowledge as we, as we actuate goodness, perseverance, as we actuate mutual affection we begin to see and experience the divine nature of god's heart that love for all oh is what we were created for i'm praying that you're experiencing his liberation today and um that you're flying flying free as you were created for in the liberation from your sins and um in the hope oh, that we have. I'm praying that for you today.
um, have a blessed, blessed Sabbath.